And uh, without any further delay, we'll introduce uh, our next uh, speaker. Um, and the first speaker, who is uh, who needs no introduction, actually, is uh, Dr. Brian Halliday. Uh, Brian is a senior clinical lecturer at the National Heart and Lung Institute. Uh, he's uh, also a cardiology consultant at Royal Brompton and Health Fit Hospital and uh, BHF uh, Intermediate Fellow. And his research and clinical interests focus on the management of patients with cardiomyopathy and the use of uh, CMR for treatment stratification. And he has a particular interest in the concepts of myocardial recovery and remission. Um, Brian, um, lights on you. Thank you very much. Super, thanks to Demetra and Elner um, for the invite and the introduction. Um, and yes, and a big thanks to Rachel Bastianin and Andrea Marlow for continuing to put on this super program. Um, so I'm going to talk um, a little bit about therapies for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This is um, you know, a, a, a dynamic and active area, which I'm sure um, we will all hear more and more about over the coming um, years as we begin to use um, cardiac mass inhibitors um, for patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Over the next 15-20 minutes, I will uh, take us through some of the journey getting us here and, and where we are at the moment, um, and delighted to take any questions at the end of it. Um, so, um, I, 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 hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is initially described as a tumour of the heart. But over the last 30 years, we've we've discovered a lot more about it and, and discovered that it indeed is not a tumour of the heart, but rather a disease of the sarcomere. Um, so the sarcomere is the contractile unit of the heart. Um, it's in cardiac cardiomyocytes. Um, and the sarcomere is made up of thick filaments. So the big green um, thick filament that, that runs through the centre of the sarcomere. It contains proteins, including myosin, Myosin is encoded by the gene MYH7. Um, and then we've also got thin filaments made up of proteins, including actin. Um, and then also tighten this big orange um, protein that spans the length of the sarcomere. And, and the sarcomere contracts whenever actin and myosin cross bridge. OK, so we get little cross bridges formed between the myosin heads here, the little uh, dots uh, 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 um, attached to the myosin. Whenever these cross bridge with actin and then the, the sarcomere contracts using up ATP via my myosin ATP is. Um, and we know that genetic variants affecting the sarcomeric proteins um, can have various effects and depending on the functional effect of the variant in the sarcomeric genes, we can produce a diametrically opposite phenotypes. And the two phenotypes typically caused by variants in sarcomeric genes are hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and dilated cardiomyopathy. Um, and as I said, the functional effects of the genetic variants that produce these phenotypes have diametrically opposite effects. So in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, we get hypercontractility. We get overaction of the sarcomere. We get too many actin myosin cross bridges forming. OK, we get increased action of actin myosin ATPs. We get use of lots of ATP. We get reduction in the myosin super relaxed state and we get enhanced contractility and impaired relaxation. So the sarcomeric variant causes enhanced contractility, impaired relaxation, overaction of actin myosin, increased actin myosin cross bridges. We get a phenotype of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So the primary molecular mechanism is enhanced contractility causing hypertrophy and fibrosis. And if we get genetic variants that cause the diametric opposite functional consequence under action of the sarcomere, then we get the opposite phenotype. We get a dilated heart with impaired contractility. We get dilated cardiomyopathy. OK, so genetic variants in the same gene can produce two diametrically opposite phenotypes because their functional effects are different. And really, up until recently, our therapies for both hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and dilated cardiomyopathy have really focused on treating the consequences of the phenotype rather than the cause of the phenotype. 
OK, so our treatment in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is focused on trying to improve symptoms um, um, rather than modify the disease course. OK, and um, in, in the last 10 years, we've we've seen a, a, a huge developments um, in, in, in terms of developing treatments for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy by targeting this primary molecular mechanism. So the idea has been that if we can reduce the number of actin myosin cross bridges um, um, formed in, 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 in someone's hearts with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, we'll be able to reduce the progression of the disease, we'll be able to attenuate disease progression and improve outcomes for patients. So if we can produce a medication that reduces actin myosin cross bridging and and hopefully then attenuate hypercontractility and improving cardiac function. And there's some really super work that's been done by the Seidmans, so um, famous um, scientists in the field of cardiomyopathy back in 2015 that was published in, in Science. And this really proves the concept of, 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 of what's happened um, in the years since. OK, so they set out to develop a therapy that reduces um, actin myosin ATPase, and they developed this agent called MYK461, which is now known as Mavicampton, which essentially reduces ATPase activity in a dose dependent fashion. OK, and they found that in three different genotypes um, um, of, of, of mice, so these genotypes known to cause hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So in, in, in these um, mice with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy with these three genotypes, they found that the, um, there was um, a dose dependent reduction in, in fractional shortening, so function of the left ventricle with, with, with increasing doses of, of Mavicampton or MYK461. And these graphs show the left ventricular wall thickness of, 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 of these um, three different um, populations of mice with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So in red, we see mice with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy who were control animals, so not given um, Mavicampton. And in blue, we see mice um, with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy given Mavicampton. And over 26 weeks, we can see that the mice in blue, given Mavicampton, had um, reduced left ventricular wall thickness compared to the mice who were not given Mavicampton. So it seemed to attenuate hypertrophy in these mice. And it didn't just attenuate hypertrophy, but it also attenuated fibrosis. So in the top panel, we see um, a, 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 a deep purple color, which is the myocardium, and then a lilac color, which is fibrosis within the myocardium. On the left, we see an untreated mice with lots of fibrosis and a typical distribution found in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy as well as hypertrophy. And the treated mice, we see a lot less fibrosis, a lot less lilac color and less hypertrophy. And under the microscope, we also find that the treated mice there is no evidence of myocardial disarray, the pathogenomic feature of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy um, on histology. So here we, we really see confirmation that this agent MYK461 or Mavicampton is able to attenuate disease progression in, in, in hypertrophic um, cardiomyopathy models in mice. So this is then translated into humans so this was published now three years ago this was the first phase two study of of mavicampton in, in humans and it was initially studied in in patients with symptomatic non-obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and this was a small study it was a placebo controlled trial um and and there were two groups of patients and they were uh, dosed at, at 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 separate intervals um so, so this is also a, a dose finding study OK, this was not part to detect effects on specific clinical endpoints, but but um, the exploratory endpoints that, that they investigated were change in NT pro BMP, change in troponin I, and, and then also some clinical endpoints. And here we can see that with treatment with Mavicampton, there's a reduction in NT pro BMP and a reduction in troponin I in these patients. So this is this is exciting um, um, data if not um, necessarily entirely conclusive. 
and and there are also some um, clinical endpoints looking at changes in symptom class peak VO2, and these did not reach clinical significance, although it's important to point out that these were not hard to detect um, 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 uh, clinical effects. So, so this was exciting data, if, if not quite definitive. Um, importantly, five out of 40 patients treated with Mavicampton in either group one or group two had a reduction in their ejection fraction from greater than 5% to less than 40%. And this is something that we've seen in, 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 in later trials with this. And this really shows that if, we're, if, if we need to find a sweet spot in terms of the dose of Mavicampton, we give a medication that reduces sarcomeric function. It's perhaps unsurprising that we will see a reduction in ejection fraction. And, and this may cause problems if we do not find it early and, and modify the, 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 the dose um, appropriately. So, so this is something to watch out for and something that we've seen in, in, in further trials in this field. So the definitive trial, um, or, or, or perhaps the first definitive trial in, in, in with Maverick Hampton was the Explorer trial. Um, and, and the important things to point out, although this is a phase three study, this was still a relatively short study of just 30 weeks. Um, and, and um, you know, it is still considered quite early data and, and we still have lots to learn about these agents. And, and this study sets out to examine the effect of Maverick Hampton on um, um, MOHA class or exercise performance with, with cardiopulmonary exercise testing. So it looked to, for a change in MOHA class or a change in, in, in peak VO2 on cardiopulmonary exercise testing. And it looked at these this in patients with left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. So left ventricular outflow tract obstruction is a common problem found in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Um, we usually treat it with beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, um, and diastopyramide. And many patients have persistent symptoms of left ventricular outflow tract obstruction, um, leading to a reduction in quality of life and often requiring invasive intervention such as septal myectomies. And the idea that we could um, reduce the hypercontractivity of the heart and potentially reduce left ventricular outflow tract obstruction with Avicampton. Um, provided an, an, an attractive additional treatment option. So this trial looked at patients with persistent symptomatic left ventricular outflow tract obstruction to see if Mavicampton could improve their symptoms um, um, in addition to the therapy that they're already prescribed. Um, importantly, it excluded patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation or persistent atrial fibrillation, not on anticoagulation. And it also ex excluded phenic copies of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, um, such as storage diseases and amyloid. Um, so um, we, we see that those patients given Mavicampton had a significant improvement in their symptoms and, and, and an exercise performance cardiopulmonary exercise testing. And there is also an improvement in each of the um, um, composites um, that, that form secondary endpoints, as well as quality of life assessed by different questionnaires. Um, there is an eager eye on the safety of these agents, given what we found in the first phase two trial. And although the number of serious adverse events was 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 even slightly reduced in the Mavicampton um, group, there were still some concerns regarding um, too much of a reduction in left ventricular ejection fraction or cardiac performance in patients treated with Mavicampton, in that two patients treated with Mavicampton had so-called stress cardiomyopathies presenting to hospital with symptoms of heart failure, and seven patients had reductions in their ejection fraction of below 50 percent had their therapy temporarily discontinued and, and the ejection fraction subsequently recovered. What else did we see? Well, as expected, we, we saw that the symptom improvement in those patients treated with Mavicampton was associated with a significant reduction in post-exercise left ventricular outflow tract gradient. 
that there was a small reduction in mean left trigger ejection fraction in those treated with, with mavacamptan, and I think a small reduction in, in left ventricular ejection fraction is expected. This is what we want. We want to reduce the hypercontractility of the heart, but what we don't want is the ejection fraction dropping too much, and, and, and too much is, is probably to below 50%. In keeping with the reduction symptoms, there's also a marked reduction in NT pro BMP, um, showing that the NT pro BMP in these patients was driven by hypercontractability and left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. And, and interestingly, but, but again, very much hypothesis generating, was, was a, a, a trend seen on subgroup analyses. Okay, so we, we caution against overinterpretation of subgroup analyses in clinical trials. But, but this is an interesting one that, that perhaps makes sense in terms of pathophysiology. And here we see that the effect of Mavicampton on the co-primary endpoints appear to be greatest in those patients with pathogenic or likely pathogenic genetic variant. And there seemed to be a gradient of, of benefit as we moved through those patients with variants of uncertain significance and those patients without any um, genetic variants. So perhaps those patients with, with genotype positive HCM are the, are, are the ones that are going to get, gain greatest benefit um, um, from, from these agents. And, and this is something that will be explored further as we gather more and more data and we're able to do meta-analyses in greater numbers of patients. So what, what do we know in terms of longer term safety? So, so explored trials only in 30 uh, in patients treated for 30 weeks. Well, well, the Valerie HCM trial looking at patients um, with left ventricular outflow tract obstruction who are eligible for septal reduction therapies. This treated patients up until 56 weeks. OK, so, so this looked at just over 100 patients who were referred because they were eligible for either a septal myectomy or um, an alcohol septal ablation based on guidelines. Okay, so 100% of patients at baseline were eligible for um, um, septal reduction therapies. And after just 16 weeks, only 14% of patients in the Mavicampton group were um, eligible for septal reduction therapy. So this dramatically reduced the, um, the number of patients who, who were eligible or perhaps needed a septal reduction um, um, therapy um, 16 weeks after after the treatment. Um, and, and, and the effect was similar in those patients initially randomized to have the placebo, but who subsequently crossed over to, to, to Mavicampton in an open in an open label phase. And again, we saw dramatic reductions in electric low flow tract obstruction um, with Mavicampton in both of these groups. Importantly, again, about 10% of patients developed a reduction in left ventricular ejection fraction. Two of these patients had a marked reduction in ejection fraction of less than 30%. So an ejection fraction of 30% in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is markedly reduced, it worryingly reduced. One of these patients had a admission with heart failure, and one of them subsequently um, had a sudden cardiac death. Um, so, so this data is is noteworthy and um, um worrying and, and suggest that we need to pay close attention um to, to patients' cardiac function after we initiate the therapy. We have lots to learn here. Um and, and two of the twelve patients had to have Mavicampton permanently discontinued in addition to the to, to the two patients above. So, what about other therapies? Well, we now have another cardiac mass inhibitor um, in clinical trials, in phase three clinical trials now. Um, it's called Afficampton, another mass inhibitor developed by a different company. Um, their phase two trial, Redwood HDM, again showed similar results to the phase two data in uh, phase three data in Mavicampton, showing a reduction in left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. Um, in panel A, in, 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 in both dosing cohorts, um, and um, um, also a, a reduction in left ventricular ejection fraction in keeping with the mechanism of action. Again, two patients developed transient reductions in ejection fractions that came up two weeks um, after um, um, re the, a, a reduction in their dose. So, 
the trial evidence has mainly been in patients with left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. So it is it more than simply a treatment for left ventricular outflow tract obstruction? Can we give it to other patients and can they benefit? We know that it targets the primary molecular mechanism of, of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So can we give it to patients potentially earlier in the disease course and can it prevent disease progression? And there has been some tantalizing data, although data in small numbers of patients from the Explore HCM to the MR substudy that suggests that it may do more than simply reduce left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. So again, I emphasize that this is in very small numbers of patients um, and is mostly hypothesis generating at this time. But there was uh, an intriguing result showing that those patients given Mavicampton had a reduction in their left ventricular mass index compared to those given placebo suggesting that perhaps Mavicampton may be able to cause regression of left ventricular hypertrophy, regression of disease um, uh, in some patients. And, and again, this awaits confirmation in larger numbers of patients, but 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 is intriguing. Um, and, and a quick slide at the end, just to talk a little bit about sarcomeric DCM, so as I said at the start, sarcomeric DCM is caused by the diametric orbital effects um, to what causes sarcomeric HCM. So converse of inhibiting actin myosin cross bridging, can we um, increase actin myosin cross bridging in sarcomeric DCM, and can that potentially um, um, improve outcomes of patients with dilated cardiomyopathy due to genetic variants in, in sarcomeric genes? And we do have two agents now, one in clinical trials and, and one that has been through phase three clinical trials, but in, in, in heart failure patients that do exactly this. So, so they increase or stabilize actin myosin cross bridging. And our hope is that they may be a specific treatment for patients with DCM caused by um, genetic variants and sarcomeric genes. And again, there's some initial concern from early data that, that these may impair diastolic function whilst improving systolic function. And there's been some concern about low grade troponin elevation, so induction of myocardial injury. So, so this is something to watch, something that's not quite ready to translate into clinical practice yet, but offers hope. So in conclusion, cardiac mass inhibitors are a new treatment for left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. They've now been licensed by NICE and will be available for prescription, hopefully within the next three to six months within the UK. They offer hope for disease modification in the future that we may be able to prevent the development of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in susceptible individuals as well as regression of hypertrophy. So finding the sweet spot will be important. We don't want them to reduce um, cardiac contractility too much. Um, we know that they're metabolized by um, um, the family of enzymes in the cytochrome P450 um, group. And, and the European Medicines Agency have now recommended that patients starting Mavicampton have genotyping so that we can better predict the metabolism of Mavicampton and predict their dose. And this may help us avoid um, the, um, the, the greater reductions in left ventricular ejective fractions that we've seen in clinical trials and prevent adverse events. Um, and then just as a quick converse, cardiac myosin activators um, may have a role in specific genetic causes of dilated cardiomyopathy that are caused by diametrically opposite effects um, of, 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 of the causes of, of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Um, I'm pleased to take any questions now or, or at the end. Um, and yes, pleased to speak to anyone uh, interested. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Brian. Uh, I mean, a really eloquent talk taking us through the whole gamut of, of new novel therapies in this area. It really shows how far we've come over recent years for, for trying to treat a specific disease rather than a generic treatment that one size fits all approach. So I think it's a really exciting time and, and you very eloquently covered all of that. Thank you. Um, what we thought we would do is take questions at the end, if that's OK, and we'll invite all the speakers up at the very end 